I will literally walk your dog. You could tell the difference in a in a home that is owned or someone who's bought it versus a renter. Is that painted? Don't worry. <laughs> I love it when clients take pride in their home. But when you break down the numbers and you think this is your cost, this is what you will be paying for the year yeah. in interest versus this is what I can save you. And then the Portuguese guys are like, how does that wall have such green grass? Uh, shitty realtors that are paying people to do offers. I feel like every single person should do their homework before they hire an agent. Well, in my opinion, you, you can't trust anything the Bank of Canada says. <laughs> you said that they thought I was Buddha. Like, <laughs> Buddha, not Buddha, you know, not that I was Buddha. I think it's important to educate them, though. Yeah. Like, ask them, ask the questions. Why do you think your home is worth that amount? So I'm, I'm scatterbrained today. I love it. Mom brain. They fell in love with me, and they were like, we want you to be my our realtor. Guys, we forgot again. We are back. Back. Back and better. keeping it fresh. Thanks. Alex. Oh, I like it. Get the memo. It's going to be this fresh. My, uh, my cat, so when this hangs, uh, all my long dresses, my cat, she sleeps in my closet. Oh. But I literally have to fucking roll myself wow. every time, and I... I brought Boo Boo with me today, so yeah. You let your cat sleep in the closet? Well, we keep the door open. It's a walk-in closet, so she just kind of. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, she's a scaredy cat. You go in the house, she's gone. Yeah. She's gone. Those. But B, it was more like your clothes. You're going to let your cat be all over your clothes? I think it's my cat. You could minimize that step by just closing the door. By closing I the know, door. I know. I don't know. I just keep it in the window. So yeah, we've uh, this is our second episode. Second episode. This is exciting. Yeah. We made it yeah. to number two. Do you yeah. have a statistic? Is that podcast don't ever make it past episode seven that's such a massive is statement really is that is that actually like true? 90 per not over 90 <laughs> percent of podcasts don't make it past episode seven wow why is that because of viewership i think people just get exhausted uh, there's so much a lot work, of work that they're putting in yeah you gotta so show up we've made it to episode two and we're gonna keep making it yeah fresh till yeah. episode one day we're gonna be on episode 100 we're, we're gonna, gonna look party. back and be like yeah yeah awesome. we get yeah, oh, okay. So how are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Yeah. Well, for people who don't know us, let's yeah. intro again because people still yeah. don't know us. We are nobodies to people right now. Uh, my name is Alex, realtor for six years, mortgage agent for four and a half. My name is Jinder, and I have been a realtor for many years now. Uh, how many years? <laughs> Specifically three, but I've been in business for years. Yeah. So over a decade of my life. Uh, all over the planet. I have had but, your license for three years. Yeah, license yeah. for three years. Um, what about you? Yeah, my name's Ian. I'm coming up on two years in the uh, real yeah. estate business. Yeah. We're all with the Fresh Approach team, which yeah. is why we label this Keeping It Fresh, because we're the young bucks of the team technically, and we're just going to keep it fresh. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of keeping it fresh, there's a lot of people that want to keep their homes fresh right now. They're trying to think about know what they want to do in their house in terms of renovations oh yeah uh, so cost of renovations are cost bonkers stuff. yeah um, Jesus. that's one of the reasons why they want a better quality of living um a lot of people can't afford to relocate right now so if they were to do anything to their house right now to increase resale value or the quality of their home what would you guys recommend are the best top five things that they could do Kitchen, hand down. Kitchen and bathrooms, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And a coat That's... of paint goes a long way. Yeah. Like, Fresh coat of paint across the whole house. Jeff just had a listing, and the dining room was like eggplant. Mm. It was like, it was really closed in. They just painted it in a nice, like, eggshell. Beautiful. It just opens the space up. So, yeah. I, honestly, like, a coat of paint goes a long way. Yeah. Eggplant. I think that's the cheapest, for it was sure. Eggplant? It was like deep like, purple. Deep purple. Yeah. Wow. That, is that the one he took on when, uh, yeah. like, from, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. So yeah, it, it looks stunning. I agree. Now. It makes that's a, probably the cheapest thing that you can do, it which goes a really long yeah, way. And you can do it yourself if even if you want yeah. to. I actually accidentally, not accidentally, but I was in like a painting mode a couple years ago, and I painted my wall green. Mm -hmm. yeah. Terrible job. So if yeah. you don't know how to paint yourself, <laughs> yeah. hire a professional. But yeah, paint goes a long way. I uh, <laughs> pulled up a couple of things here. There was a report done by Homestars. Okay, so Jen is our, our stat yeah. master here. Stat guru. So, yeah. An average Canadian homeowners in 2023 yep. spent 12300 on home renovations, which I don't think is much. That's much, 12 yeah. Months. Uh, that was according to this uh, Renault report. Meanwhile, the year that's coming now, the same Canadian said that they'd spend less because of interest rates, yep. higher cost of living, 
and that cost is now 10264 that they're going to be spending. There's a lot that you can do with that money. You could do a mm. lot of DIY stuff. Yeah. You want to do like an accent wall, you know, like yeah. watch a couple of YouTube videos. It, it doesn't take a rocket science to- TikTok season yeah. Yeah, for, for, for fun love stuff. Some yeah. TikTok. So a lot of people listening, they actually don't know what it costs to renovate a kitchen, what it costs to renovate a bathroom, yeah. or a basement, or you even have to be curb appeal. You hire, though, because people yeah. can really screw you over. That and it's, I feel like that uh, it's like general because it's heavily dependent on what you're doing. Yeah. In, ter- in terms of the finishes too, the yeah. size. Like custom kitchen. Are you going granite? Are you going yeah. quartz? Yeah. Because you could choose a lot of expensive finishings. Ceramic, and Don't go ceramic. Yeah. 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 Alex, why do you have to be careful with who you choose to hire? Because you can have someone that half does a job, yeah. doesn't show up. Yeah. You know, they ask you to pay in full. Some people get screwed over. They actually pay in full. Yeah. Um, other people just. Don't do the job because they they're saying you have to pay me first. Jobs half asked, and then they put a lien on your house. Like there's so many things that can go wrong. So always like do your research, get a few yeah. quotes. Yeah. Ask for like a reputable contractor. Okay. Um, ask friends and family. Yeah, friends yeah. and family is huge. I find like people who have used them in the past makes yeah. a big difference and people that can vouch for them. Yeah. Because I've heard horror stories of yeah. contractors half assing jobs. Yep. Taking, you know, 50, 60% deposits. And, yeah. then, and then not even showing up. Kind of screwed. So or the venting like is that. going straight into their primary bedroom. Could you imagine? Oh, yeah. There's been like That's... nightmare situations. But I like how you brought that up because a lot of people listening, they're like, yeah, I need to get something done. They go to the first person, end up giving up yep. the, the entire sum of the job to the person and they yep. just stop showing up. Yeah. And then they're at that money. What can yeah. they do? Also, cheaper doesn't always mean better. Yeah. If you yeah. get three quotes and the cheap and, you know, yeah. don't always go with the cheapest one yeah. just because just because of the monetary portion. Yeah. Because yeah. you'll end up paying more in the long run. I agree. But even right now in today's market, if you, you know, invest that $15,000 into, you know, a coat of paint, doing a few things aesthetically, it can really make a difference on your the sale yeah. of your home. Right. Mm-hmm. If you don't do anything. Your home can just sit on the market for a while. Yeah. I think it does. Right? It makes a difference in terms of how the property shows and how, how people feel in a home. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I sold a home recently and I actually went and painted the house myself. Ooh, uh, for the, the condo? Uh, no, no, no. This was a, a detached that I sold in, uh, off of South Down. Is it Clarkson? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I was like a painter. I was there, like, this is what I was, nobody knows that I was the guy that painted this entire house, but it was huge. I was like this, it was freshly painted and it made such a big difference to people walking through. Is that something you offered as part of your package? I mean, I got the full 5% commission (laughs) and I competed with five different agents on this. Yeah. Yeah. And these were agents that were cutting their commission. They were saying that they were going to do it for literally like a percent. And I didn't even, I don't talk about commission. I always talk about the value that I'm going to bring. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I will literally walk your dog. I'm (laughs) cutting your doctor's appointments. You need that painted? Don't worry. I'm going to be on the ladder tomorrow. I'll do it at once. I was doing all three of those things. (laughs) Wow. But um, no, being freshly painted does make a big difference. Yeah. It's the smallest cost. Yeah. Um, and then number two, obviously, the kitchen. Um, Honestly, just... curb appeal is huge too. A lot of people, yeah. you could tell the difference in a in a home uh, that is owned or someone who's bought it versus a renter. Sometimes you could tell. Sometimes the love, right? I feel like a lot of owners don't really care about curb appeal. Come to Oakville, baby. Oh yeah, people Oak... love their homes. Yeah. Mm. People love their homes. They it's, take care of it. Yeah. Okay. But you can tell when you're walking down the street, honestly, if it's it's a rental or it's a rental or owned, yeah. owner. Yeah. 100%. No, 1000%. I actually grew up with the curb appeal king. My dad is like the king of curb appeal. Yeah. He um He's going to do it in a very like uh, soft way because he doesn't want the neighbors knowing he's doing this. Yeah. But he's like, right now it's April. And he's like de weed doing all the de weeding. He's like planting yep. grass seeds right now. Spring's and early this year. He wants the greenest grass on the uh, on the street. He's gonna have the. Is he one of those guys that has like a, a sign on his lawn? No peeing on no mm-hmm. no dog on the land. But he is one of those guys <laughs> that at three a.m. he's out there secretly watering his uh, dog oh, lawn. Yeah. And then the Portuguese <laughs> guys are like, "How does that wall have such green grass?" And he's like. Oh, you can't water your grass you know what i mean oh, like on certain God. days oh really yeah. water restrictions go into effect in the summer oh, oh i didn't know that i didn't know that these a city oh. bc right yeah oh, oh okay okay, okay. So, there's no way this is in ontario yeah, yeah, yeah. Like tuesday's your watering day and not on thursday what about if it's like a really hot summer and you have to water every single day that's when it shut down completely because the forest fires 
they oh. want the water to be rerouted. Oh, damn. The people wow. that need the water the most. Yeah. So that's when my dad's out there every yeah. single night watering. That's super wow. interesting. Yeah. yeah. But it's nice. It's I love it when um, clients take pride in their home. Yes. It's so much better. Like you walk through their house and you, it's easier to sell. Like yeah, they've taken absolutely. such good care of this. They pr- sometimes it's like the worst renovation in the world. Like my um, one of my clients actually built a bathroom in the laundry room, and he was an older person. Mm-hmm. And they were like, "Oh, look at this toilet that I built!" And I was like, "Oh God, yeah, it looks yeah. terrible." Yeah, it yeah. was just who puts it there. Yeah, it's just a- for the ones that you're saying like that are very well maintained. Like when you're working with buyers. It's very like you can see that very easily. Yeah, buyers respect it. Yeah, and it puts a lot more confidence in them to purchase the home. Yeah, that's if they see the pride of ownership there. What do you guys think is going to happen this summer, real estate wise? I think things are going to get better. I think starting twenty twenty four, things have definitely gotten better. The fall was rough. Before January, January. Was um, nice. I feel January wasn't terrible. Beginning of January. Was kind Beginning of January, yeah. But like the fall was brutal. Fall was brutal. Fall 2023. Yeah. I like this. Like, this is where I'm more excited as a real estate agent. Yeah. My first couple of years, it was like booming. Yeah. And as a- came in like yeah. right time. Yeah, yeah. And as a newer agent, I was winning offers because I was going in with this fresh mentality. Yeah. And we we're competing with multiple offers and we were winning because I knew how to win the offer. Yeah. I wasn't obviously overpaying or anything, but we were going in the way we needed to go in as opposed to veteran agents that were a little bit more conservative initially. Yeah. Um, now- I'm excited because this gives, it's like even playing field for everybody. Everybody's kind of on the sideline. Sellers. But you know what? Buyers, buyers are smarter this this year. Like buyers are so much smarter. Well, not this year. Well, that since the past couple of years. You, if you're, there's lots of multiple offers happening still right now. And a lot of buyers aren't going. No, you're not seeing crazy over, amounts right? over asking. There's no. multiple offers yeah. happening, still selling conditionally. Yes. Like yeah, that's huge that. when it's six offers and you're yeah. still much going in conditional in offer, yeah. Inspection, right? Do you have like the stats on that house. Remember, there was that one home in Mississauga. Oh, oh like, yeah. So that was. Uh, I think so. Was, it, right. I didn't show it. I was just okay. following it. But it was in Aaron Mills. It got. It listed at seven forty nine, which I think was the price they bought. Like, bought it for, yeah. Like close to the price they bought it for in twenty seventeen. Yeah. Wow. They had like I think close to three hundred or something showings. They got eighty five offers total, but they ended up selling for. Exactly nine 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 firm. So it's just under a million wow. because if you're at if you're under a million, you don't yeah, need you the twenty percent down. Like we have the yeah. CMHC yeah. Um, insurance, and so is that market value for that. Oh, I don't know. I didn't no, know I think one. it was above market value. Like yeah. market value would have been like I think around like nine fifty ish. So still, so they're smarter this time around. They're not yeah going a hundred. It's not a hundred two hundred k yeah. over market value, yeah. I mean, but. Still go firm on some properties i always i always say it's up to you like you can never tell someone to yeah. but you know if the roof's been done the new furnace new ac new, like yeah. everything's been done yeah essentially you're spending the 500 hundred dollars, 600 dollars on the home inspection to ease your soul which is great like check the attic you can't check that right yeah but yeah i mean some things are still still going multiples but did yeah. you guys sorry change topic i just got a an idea again so i'm i'm scatterbrained today i love Mom it. brain um, do you guys hear about that Brampton realtor that was paying for people to oh, put the no. fake offers oh, in? Way. And yeah, there I heard was like about a that. WhatsApp group chat about it. I heard about that. No way. I didn't you hear about, about it. I went, no. How did he get viral? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I honestly don't know who the realtor is, but he was paying people like two five hundred, but two to five hundred dollars to put a fake offer in to make it seem like there was multiple offers that make it go higher. Yeah. And apparently he did it on multiple listings. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. what What do you guys think about that? I mean, it upsets me as an agent. This yeah. Is, these are the type of people that do not belong in our industry. Yeah. And you're going to find them bad everywhere. Apple. Yeah. You're going to find them in every single industry, and it just gives it a bad rap. Yeah. Especially already when people are so uh, cautious. They're like, oh, well, is the other offer really higher you know what i mean when when your client goes in with an yeah. offer and it yeah. comes back and says hey you're in the top two but yeah you know, the other offer is a little bit better and it, it's there's this level of you know it just kind of yeah ruins it for everybody but yeah so going off that now there's open offers that are implemented that yeah. we have the ability yeah. to do but only if the seller says yes i want to correct and you can open it up at any time yeah so what's your opinion on that and would you guys implement that if you guys were on the I, listing I, I side i think it's such a law new rule because before agents could 
still do it. Like they would do it even if they the seller didn't know, right? You just say, okay, if you you're gonna get this, Ian, if you just give me like five more grand, yeah, it's yours. Like I've had that happen to me in multiple situations. But the, okay, but now essentially, let's just say you have three offers. Okay, you could say gender. I have an off, or you can just email the three agents. Say there's three offers on the table. One's at nine forty. One's at nine forty five. One's at nine fifty. Um, two of them, the nine forty is conditional on financing and inspection, and the other two are firm. You have an hour to improve your offer and send us your best. Like, is that something you guys could see? Yourself I don't doing think so. I think it? I think that's so wrong. I do Why though? Why do you guys think it's wrong? Because it's like, I don't know. I, I How actually, the I don't... person with more money is going to win. The person that can afford it more is going to win. It's just so unfair. Let's say you and I were competing. I all of a sudden know your offer is fifty thousand or ten thousand dollars more. I put in eleven thousand. You put in twelve. It's, yeah, 13, it's 15, like an 16. auction essentially. Yeah. You're going but at an auction. It brings transparency that you don't have when everything's closed. Because that if, that I understand. Here's the thing. I, as realtors, we go in and we look at what the value of the ho- home is. Yep. We look at comparables and then we go back to the seller and say, or the buyer, if we're on the buyer side, listen, this home right here, based on comparables and the same size and the same finishes, is worth eight hundred thousand dollars. The one last week sold for seven eighty five. Yeah. You know what I mean, like yeah. this one has a better garage or whatever and you say listen i know you don't want to pay market value for it so we got to start somewhere and you start at let's say 700 730 okay eventually you're going to get to around market value if you're in a proper market yeah nobody wants to nobody wants to pay 900 or a million dollars for that and that's that's what this will do yeah It'll start but, creating but that's hard to what happens I, in the closed offer process in the, okay i get it in the yeah. closed offer process because let's say during covid things were going like two hundred thousand over yeah i had a client that lost over one hundred fifty thousand. i'm like whoever that buyer is has a stupid agent that's for, what it is for allowing yeah. them to go that high because it's not worth that and those people are losing money now because their house is tremendously lower um like i get it but i also i don't get it i i don't know it's, i haven't been really in this yeah, situation i haven't been in a situation where where it's happened and where someone's opened it up but i could see it being beneficial to a seller but you have to think about it from the perspective is you're the listing agent mm-hmm. like you have to do the best job for your seller you do and i feel like if you're in a situation where let's just say you had two offers very close together um I feel like it could be beneficial yeah, but, to open it up. Okay, so in this scenario, let's say you have one offer that's nine hundred thousand, another offer that's like nine hundred five, and you open you. The seller says you can disclose the amount to the each buyer. Mm-hmm. What if they both are like, oh, well, that's it. Then the nine hundred five wins. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get more money. No, it doesn't. But it doesn't at all. Closed a close like when it's closed, you can't disclose. If you say you two are are the highest, you have an hour or a chance to improve. The chances are of them improving, I believe, are higher when it's closed versus open. Fair. Right? Yeah, I agree as well. And the increase is way more when it's closed, I feel. If it was yeah. 900 and 905, then it's just, oh, what do you think the other guy's going to do? Okay, he's yeah. minimal, get, minimally he has to come up to 905, so maybe he'll go up to yeah. Dean. Okay. Yeah, and then the 905 person is like, yeah. oh, do I really want to do that? Now now it is mine. What what if the other buyer doesn't go up, right? Yeah. So, But it know. comes down to emotions at the end of the day. How badly do you want the house? There's there's houses where, you know, you see 10, 15 offers on it, and I'll somebody really people. wants that house. Doing the open bidding. I mean, we have the option right now. And don't buyers have the option to pull out if open bidding is... If your realtor puts a clause a part yeah. of the APS, yeah. Oh, uh, really? I didn't know. Yeah, he's a broker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a certain a form you have to include, but yeah, essentially you could put in a clause that says if you're going to be disclosing the contents of my offer, I'm pulling out of yeah. the. I'm pulling out of. The, but then, what's to say that you know you have these uh, shitty realtors that are paying people to do offers? Yeah. How are you going to be able to determine as a buyer if, if the realtor true, yeah. has disclosed the contents of your offer when? Everything's kind of happening from your own, own house, yeah, or yeah, office, whatever. You're never really going to be able to tell unless the, you know, if you have shady realtors doing that, what's yeah. to stop them from doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like every single person should do their homework before they hire an agent. A thousand percent, uh, well, absolutely. Thousand percent. A lot of people don't. A lot of people just go with yeah. their cousin who does one transaction yeah. or if that yeah you know there's eighty thousand people in the toronto real estate yeah. board half of them did nothing last zero transactions yeah. you know and then like 
what is it, 20,000 of them maybe did a, like under five? Yeah. Like, you don't want to hire someone and like that. It does break my heart when I hear these horror stories. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, you chose this, right? Yeah. Um, so it's true. here's the story. I had a I had these two sisters who wanted to buy a house. I had a meeting with them. They came into one of my open houses. They fell in love with me and they were like, we want you to be my our realtor. I showed them probably... 10, 15 homes. We put a offer on a few. This is when the market was crazy. Yeah. We actually lost out on a few because the market was nuts. Like yeah. people were offering $100,000, $200,000 over asking. And I was like, mm. oh my gosh. And we were close, but not that close. Yeah. They get a call from a family friend saying, we're doing a private deal. We don't want to work with the realtor. Like we're just going to, this is a private deal. And they were convinced that they could have gotten a good deal doing this deal privately. So they give me a call. Hey, oh my gosh. We, and I had the BRA, so I could have pursued them for the 2.5%, the, yeah. but I chose not to because, yeah. you know, this isn't, this is, this we're all about no having yeah. So, right, sorry, were they buying their family friend's house? Yes. Okay. So, but the, they were, it was going to be private. Oh, uh, okay. Right okay. Just okay. Lawyer. They had a, yeah, I think they might've had a realtor, the, 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 the family yeah. friend. So he probably ended up double dipping, but they paid. So in the peak peak, which was like your homes were going a hundred thousand over 200, yeah. whatever. They ended up paying even more uh-huh. than that. So their family screwed them over. Family screwed them over. Wow. They're now calling me. So sad. We should have used you just because they thought they could have saved two and a half percent, which they weren't even going to be paying me yeah. Yeah. coming from the seller. And and I'm like, oh, now that they want to sell their house and they're not even going to get this money out because they have their mortgage. And I'm just like, once again, you need to do your due diligence just because it's a private sale with a yeah. private friend, family yeah. friend. Get a realtor in there to help you look at the comps and go in with the right, right offer. Where was the house? This was in Etobicoke. Oh, okay. Yeah. What was and the I, price point? Oh, the price, the home should have, it was a condo townhouse. Okay. Oh. So it should have been, it should have been around 690. Okay. Six, like in the seven, peak, it was 690. In the peak, it was 700. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. They ended up buying for over, and that's like what all the comparables were going. That yeah, one won yeah. 100,000 over. They were hitting that yep. that that mark. Yeah, they ended up paying about one hundred and twenty-five thousand over that. Oh Jeez. my! For the last God. comparable, and, and, and for a smaller, it's gonna take them to to rebuild that. You're stepping on the cord, oh, bro. <laughs> it's in, it's, yeah, that's yeah. that's insane. And the, what's crazy that it's their family that that screwed them, over. screwed them over. And yeah. she calls me a couple of days ago. I should have always trusted you. And I'm like, yeah, hey. because if they sell, they're they're losing a hundred percent. So at the end of the day. I don't care who, even if I wasn't a realtor, I now know. Like, I've been in multiple oh, fields. Like, my, my background is genetics, molecular biology. I've been in businesses. Yeah. Daughter. As a realtor now, even if I was to step away from this profession, which I'm never going to because I love it, <laughs> it's the best business in the world, you have to use a good realtor yeah. who understands. Wild. Um, yeah. I always tell people that you should interview three people, agents. People, yeah. And I'm happy to compete. Yeah. See who you click with. Yeah. And honestly, it's just like, but it's just like the listing side. You're going to have people come in mm-hmm. and give you the value of your home, yeah. right? And and learn about their services, learn about their marketing, learn about what their team does. Like our team is unreal. What we have, our systems are unreal. Yeah. And everyone should have that on the listing side. So why not do it on the buyer side? Exactly. And I also think there's situations where, you know, you might not be a good fit for that person. Sure. And you might connect better. Yeah. There's been times when... There's so many, Sorry to interrupt you, but there's yeah. so many people that, yeah, I just want... It's my uncle. I have, yeah. I have to. It's my uncle. Yeah. Like, so hard. I know. I know. But you should definitely be interviewing people on the buy side, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Always interview. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just your time. Yep. And then you make a... 30 minutes. Of- you, kinda, you can ask the exact same questions to each of the agents. Yep. You can see yeah. who you're most comfortable with and who you yep. think is going to do the best job for you. Yep. Um, and always go on a trial. I always offer, even when I have buyer presentations, to go on a trial run. Let's go see, pick a couple properties to go see for one day. Mm-hmm. We go and see all the properties, and then we can kind of determine if if, if you're, if I'm a good fit for you, and if you're a good fit for me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. If it's cool, then yeah, we keep working together. And if not, that that's no problem as well. Yeah, at least yeah. you're not, not wasting your time. Yeah. You know, what I always say to people, I value my time. Mm-hmm. I have a kid. Yeah, I got one on the way. Yeah. Like I value my time tremendously and I want to value your time as well. Mm-hmm. Right. So if this isn't a great fit, mm-hmm. then then we'll find out. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. And sometimes a client isn't the right fit for us. Exactly. 100%. You know, I've had certain clients that I've had to actually fire. Yeah. Uh, and and it was hard because at the end of the day, you don't want to fire a client. 
but they're taking away from your life, your every other part of your business. Yeah. yeah. Uh, these are clients that are going to call you at like 10 p.m., 12 a.m. I was yeah. sure I'll let, but these are people that are just that's, rude. But that's rude like people. setting your expectations <laughs> too. Like, and that's what yeah, you know, the too. Fresh Approach has taught me in the last couple of years is you have to yeah. set your expectations with your clients. So, but yeah. 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 It's uh, it's fun though. I mean, so a lot of buyers really don't know what to offer, so they come in and they're like, okay, like I want this house, and they'll they'll want to offer, let's say, two hundred thousand dollars below asking. A lot of buyers are no, not, yeah. not getting pre-approved yeah. though. Oh, right? that, that's another thing. That's another thing is that even to jump to bandwagon what you're saying. Yeah. Where where are you getting this number? I ask people all the time. If you want to offer on this house, what do you think it's worth? Yeah. And they say two hundred thousand under. And if it's like a one point eight million dollar property, they want to go one one five. Mm-hmm. Okay, what do you have that justifies that number? And if I would say if you were the seller, mm-hmm. what put yourself in the seller's shoes? How insulting is that off- offer, right? Because that's I don't know. But sometimes poppy. you just have to put it on paper just for the and them do it a learn, couple times yeah. just for them to learn and go through the motions. Yeah. yeah, because every buyer, every seller wants to get the top dollar for yeah. their property, and every buyer wants, wants, a, wants deal. a deal. Yeah. So and both sides have to feel like they've won. Yeah. And the best way to describe this is, is I actually went on a listing appointment recently and mm-hmm. it's actually a literally a, probably a drug house. There's like people. Oh, yeah. Burlington. 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 Yeah. Burlington. Yeah. It's right by Mapleview Mall. Yeah. 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 These are great. This is a great area. But I'm not kidding you. Like I walked through this house and I was like, keep keep your shoes on, type. Floor. Yeah, these are nice people. Like they're having their they're having the time of their life at this, I, I bet. this drug yeah. house. And the seller truly believes the value of his house is like three, four, five hundred thousand dollars more than what it is. Yeah. Like, do you realize? But there's certain people that you that, that maybe that's a person that you can't work with. You have to educate them. These are the facts, and that's yeah. what we give people at in listing presentations yeah. is the facts. Yeah. And if someone's gonna, you know. Yeah. blow up that number just to blow up your ego yeah. then maybe that's the person you want to work with right the best thing i'll do is if i know what the home is worth based on let's say something that's sold this the condos are a good example there's certain floor plans that are exactly the same in the building yep. that I sold maybe five days ago you know same maintenance fees yep. you have the exact comparable let's say mm-hmm. Um, and you could walk in with that number which is based on facts you could even add five ten thousand to it if you want yeah but you always have to ask the seller, well, what do you think your home is worth? Yep. And if you, if they end up saying it's worth $50,000 more, you have to be prepared that your number is really going to upset them. That there's certain agents that will come in and will they'll say, yeah, 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 we'll take that. Yeah, because they just want a listing. They just want to sign in the loan, right? Yeah. I think it's important to educate them, though. Yeah. Like, ask them, ask the questions. Why do you think your home is worth that amount? Yeah. And kind of go through it. And then nine times out of 10, they're going to say, well, this one's sold and I have this. But they not they, they might not be taking other things into consideration. Yeah. Yeah. I think most of the time, if you explain things properly about why you are where you are, they might not agree with you necessarily, but yeah. they'll under have a better understanding of it. Yeah, yeah. Education is key right now, and all because we've been in a shifting market since what the interest rates started in what was it twenty twenty two? Where it's almost it really been two years up. now yeah. since they started going up. So yeah. it's been a shifting market yeah. for two years. It's been literally a roller coaster, right? Yeah. So obviously you're a mortgage specialist as well. So you're yep. on that end. You see there's a lot of renewals happening right now. I was literally just going to change topic to renewals. Yeah. Renewals are going to be insane in the next couple of years yeah. because a lot of people locked in at those lower rates. Yep. So they're going to hit, um, they're, they're going to have... Um, mm pain when it comes to renewal <laughs> yeah. that is the word i want yeah. use it's going to be painful because they're going to go you know i have clients that bought in during covid but it wasn't at the peak because you have to think what was it march at end of february march 2022 yeah. was like the highest sales right mm-hmm. the highest of the highest yeah. they bought like a year prior okay locked in at 1.99 percent five years yep they're sitting yeah. pretty mm-hmm. right they're sitting pretty they might have overpaid just a tad yeah, yeah. but I did an evaluation for them a little while ago, and they're actually more than what they bought, but they're still laughing. They're like, Alex, we don't want to sell yet because we're at 1.9%, yeah. right? But when Great. they come for renewal in 2025, mm-hmm. I think it's 2025? Yeah. Yeah, 25, 26. It, it's going to be painful if the interest rates are you know, still 5 6%, yeah. which we yeah. hope they're not. We hope they're about 35 to 4 mm-hmm. which isn't that bad, but 
the the pain that people are feeling right now when it comes to renewal is where you're going to be seeing a lot of listings because they're going to realize I can't afford this house at this price yep. at, with this mortgage at yeah. this interest rate. So it's um it's going to be tough. So let's say you want to list right now. You're a seller. Yep. What are the things that you should be doing? Pricing it properly. Pricing it properly. Is that one of the most important things you're seeing well, right now? Well, or honestly, every single person, buyer or seller, should be talking with a mortgage broker. Yeah. Right. If your bank reaches out with, out yeah. to you, usually they need to give you a six month window, mm -hmm. right, to say your your mortgage is coming up for renewal in six months, and this is your offer currently. Yeah. Don't just go and sign that, right? Uh -huh. A lot of sellers are saying this is what my bank is offering. Go speak to a broker. See what yep. your options are. Mm -hmm. If you need to sell, break down the numbers. If I sell for X price and I can maybe buy something a little bit smaller and make my affordability window easier on my biweekly paycheck, yeah. right? Yeah. You have to break down the numbers. So a lot of people are really just looking at interest rates where I I break down the numbers. I get really nerdy when it comes to that. Um, but a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people just go to the banks. This is what I'm signing. You know, you go to TD, TD can only offer you TD products, mm -hmm. right? You can't, sometimes people need to consolidate debt. Mm -hmm. What makes more sense? If you're going to have, you know, let's say $50,000 in debt, right? Your credit cards are, what, 21.99%? Yep. What makes more sense? Consolidating everything and your mortgage into one payment at, let's say, a 7% interest rate for one year with a B lender, yeah. mm -hmm. fix your credit, clear out your, your, your debt, one year to fix everything, yeah. and then you're going to renew again at a cheaper interest rate, right? So a, a lot of people are thinking, oh my God, 7%, Alex, that's so much. Yeah. Yeah. But when you break down the numbers and you think this is your cost, this is what you will be paying for the year yeah. in interest versus this is what I can save you, they're like, holy shit. Exactly. I get it. Yeah. So when you break down the numbers, it, it makes more sense that way. Education. Education goes such a long Show way. Them. But yeah. the the mass population, again, is just thinking... Interest rates. Yeah. Interest rates is the only thing that matters, That's, right? Yeah, everybody's just focused on that one thing. One thing. And you need to have that fresh approach, like what you're yeah. saying right now. That's a different way of looking at it. Yeah. And once you see, once your eyes are open, then you can make some decisions. Yeah. But if you don't have the awareness and the understanding, the only thing you're going to be focused on is, oh, the interest payments are so high, my payments yeah. are high. My payments are high. Or, but when you look at what I'm saving, yeah. am I saving $12,000 in interest in the next 12 months, right? Yeah. And a lot of people aren't. So when I when I have these conversations with people, it and they, they go away, like take away from the, the meeting, they come back thinking like, Alex, I, I really didn't think about it that way. Um, and what's one year of your life? Yeah. And here it goes by a hell of a lot quicker oh, yeah. when you're older than it is when you're younger. And right now in this market, even a couple months is huge. So I want to throw huge. something really interesting to you. You had a listing. Uh, at the end of last year, what uh, changed yeah. with oh, yeah, that listing literally between December and January, February? What was, what are we seeing now? I mean, it's it's sold like, it sold December 28th. It sold like, I don't know, I just yeah. noticed an influx. So, uh, after Christmas, well, a lot of people took their listings off leading up to Christmas, but we kept mm -hmm. ours on. Yeah. So we were one of the very few available yeah. and our showing activity just spiked after Christmas Yeah. because I'm guessing there wasn't a lot available and the house showed very well. So I ended up selling shortly after that. And so, I found like, sorry, go ahead. So we're seeing that with a lot of properties now. Why are they all of a sudden selling now, in your opinion, as opposed to? I think there's a lot of media attention about, there, at the time, there was a lot of media attention that the rate cuts were were behind us and that we're going to start to see a decrease. Like I think the first one, the, a lot of the talk was April. Was Back April. in December, yeah, it was. That was April. It was so April. people, once they hear about it in the media, they anticipate it and they're like, okay, for fall, pretty much all the buyers were on the sidelines. Yep. So then they jumped right back in. So we're going into spring market, which is historically like the busiest time yeah, of the year. May, June. Because, um, uh, you know, families love moving during that time. Yeah. But yeah, all the talk is that, you know, and the Bank of Canada, every announcement has kind of implied that they're not increasing rates anymore and that they're debating when to start decreasing. But it's inflation, right? Their, their, their mark is 2%. Mm -hmm. Right. And they don't want to change that mark because they say, OK, you know what? We'll go to three percent now. If inflation stays at three percent, then, you know, but then what's Canadians going to think? Are you changing it so quickly? Or are you going to keep it at three percent or keep it at two percent or just mm -hmm. go with three percent? Right. Who are they going to believe if something happens, another war happens and and it drastically changes the economy again? What's the consumer mind going to yeah. think? When the Bank of Canada is making announcements, yeah. right? Well, in my opinion, you you can't trust anything the Bank of Canada says because <laughs> yeah. 
it, yeah. during COVID, they yeah. said that when the rates were really low, the, the the governor, whoever the guy is that makes like the announcements, the yeah. yeah, said, don't worry, rates are going to be low yeah. for a very long time. Yeah. And yeah. then what happened? But they knew that they screwed themselves. They knew that they lowered rates way too fast. And then they knew or they know that they raised rates way too fast. So now they're trying to be like the cool guy that, let, let's see what happens. Let, let's see yeah. what happens. Yeah, I agree. Should come in, like, and then they monitor the U.S. market as well. That that right. has a, a yeah. serious balance in our market. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. The economy plays a huge role yeah. in real estate. I always say it. Shelter is a necessity. Everybody mm-hmm. needs it, whether you're buying or renting. And the funny thing is buyers are waiting for interest rates to come down. And sellers think that when all the buyers come in, the prices are just going to skyrocket again. And what they're what sellers aren't realizing right now is right now is actually a really good time to sell. There's such low inventory. Yeah. So there are buyers out there looking right now. Yeah. And properties aren't selling overnight. Some are. Some are. But yeah. a lot or the average it's like between twenty and thirty days. Yeah. Overseas. Depending on yeah, yeah. In your micro markets, right? Yeah. So you as a seller, yeah. you could wait until the buyers come running back in, but are they coming back running in? Right no. Now? But but that's the thing too. A lot of sellers have a greed mentality when it comes to pre or sorry during COVID. I I want those prices during COVID. I want what happened. I want to sell my house in seven days. Yeah. I need to have that high price. But again, those prices, your price now, the value of your home, and I'm speaking just of Oakville because that's where I mainly focus, Oakville, mm-hmm. Burlington. Yeah. The price of your home is just the same, if not higher, than it was during COVID. Oh, sorry, pre-COVID. Yeah. Right? So you have to, there's micro markets. When when you see, excuse me, blabbing again, um, when you see the, um, you know, the the new stats come out on CP24 for the, the real estate market, yeah. that's Toronto as a whole. That is from Oshawa right. to Hamilton yeah. to like Milton. That's everywhere as a whole. So people can't really see yeah. what's yeah. going on in my market, right? Yeah. Downtown Toronto condos are different than Milton condos. Let me ask you guys a question. Yeah. Yeah, go. When do you guys think is the best time to buy or sell a property? Line to buy August and December. Okay. And the first two weeks of January. Less competition, but you do have less inventory. Mm-hmm. Um, but you get the pick of what you want. In August, last two weeks of August, people just want to enjoy the rest of their yeah. summer. People yeah. aren't thinking about buying and selling. And if they are, if they're buyers, they're serious. Mm-hmm. If they're sellers, they're serious. Right? Yeah. They need yeah. to buy. If your home is listed in December, what happened to our team's listings in December? Yeah. We took them off. Yeah. We're going to relist in, in, in February or yeah. the spring. Best time to buy. Best time to buy is December yeah. because people are not thinking about it. And then you have to think, Christmas is coming. Everyone's going to be at their family Christmas parties. Yeah, I finally sold my house. People are going to love it. It's funny. Warren Buffett always says, buy when there's blood on the streets. Yeah. Uh, right. What usually happens is people are buying when everybody's buying and people are mm-hmm. selling when everybody's selling. That's yeah. what's happening in the market. But selling, obviously, spring. Yeah. yeah. Spring. And I think like October is a hot month. Yeah. Right? It's your fall market. Yeah. October, October, November. You have a random open house with like 50 people in it. And you're yeah. like, what the heck? What the hell is going on? Yeah. No, I agree with you with yeah. those. Um, I lost my train of thought completely, but it's all Sorry. good. <laughs> um, but we're just, we, we don't have it. We're, this is the Keeping It Fresh podcast. We're just kind yeah. of bringing it today. Um, yeah, no, it's been fun chatting with you guys. Yeah, it's been solid. Yeah. Um, there's so many things happening in the market. It's it's funny, like what what's happening right now is going to be completely different than what's happening in a couple months. Yep. Um, but coming back to what the real estate, um, when a good time is buy, to buy or sell, um, I don't know what the stats were by Aurea, but most transactions were done through a realtor, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a very small percentage that are private for sale by owners. And realtors love to go on vacation in those months, like those July, June, yeah. August months. We yeah. disappear and you see, you know, transactions yep. kind of dip. It, it kind of, they... they um, it's the best door knocking times, man. Yeah. yeah. So it's funny because... I was looking at the stats and I was like, this is when all of all of us leave. <laughs> this, yeah. this is why home sales are going down. Yeah. I don't think it's just tied to, you know, inflation or interest yeah. rates. Yeah. So those general curves happen because yeah. of us. I was thinking of, of it from a different perspective. So yeah. I'm no. a firm believer that you should buy or sell when you feel ready and yeah. when yeah. you feel yeah. able. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's the logical. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but a lot of people, answer. like, especially when you're talking about sellers and greed, it's yeah. like, Sellers want to get the most amount of money for their property, but you know, do you know how stressful it is 
when you have everything on the line and you need to sell that property yeah. Yeah. versus you want to sell it and yeah. like you can you know you've listed it yeah. you know you have flexibility but like yeah. when you're in a situation and i've been we've all been in them when, yeah. when you're on the when you're the realtor for those clients yeah. it, it gets way more stressful but that's circling back to what's going to be happening in the next couple of years with all these mortgage renewals coming yeah. up i think the people in you know 2025 might have the upper hand when it comes to renewals because the hopefully knock on wood the interest rates will be a little bit lower i think they will be um but that's that's what happened over the last year right mm -hmm. i think we're coming to an end of our uh, little sash here i can well, talk to you guys it, forever eh? that was solid for uh, episode two but yeah, that was episode fun two. guys we forgot again you, you got fun with same. this i'm yeah. excited to continually do these podcasts yeah this is fun. Yeah, um there's yep. so much happening it's nice to kind of just yeah. sit down and just have a little chat about things yeah just talk about and obviously the market what's going on yeah. what we think is going to happen this is sure. so much fun and yeah and i think it, we're going to have lots of good topics coming up guys yeah Lots this is just it's just the beginning. Jeez. We want to help our sellers and we want to help our buyers make the best decisions. Yep. I like how you tied it in. The best time to buy. When it, what is the best time for you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because it really is. The second yep. somebody says, "Hey, can you come list my house?" The number one thing I say to them is, "Hey, well, why do you need to move?" Yeah. And usually it's this happened or yeah. that happened or I'm you have to find out the why. Or yeah. it's like, yeah. okay, wow, yeah. how many months? Like it's you start yeah. to yeah. into it. And um, when yeah. fast forward, when they start messaging you saying, thank you so much, you just saved my life. Like yeah. Yeah. My life. I got yeah. That message today. Actually. Oh, just, yeah. just warm your heart. It saved my life. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. She said that they thought I was Buddha. Like, <laughs> Buddha, not Buddha. You know, not that I was Buddha, <laughs> that Buddha sent me. I was like, no way. I didn't even know how to respond. I was driving around being like, thanks God for putting me in, in that yeah. path. Yeah. Answering somebody's prayer. And sometimes we're literally answering prayers out there. Yep. So. Yeah. It's that's our goal. That's why we yeah. want to keep yeah. it fresh. We just want to help people, yeah. educate people. Honestly, education yeah, is, people is the most. Yeah. So that was yeah. episode two. So two. Thanks for tuning in. It it fresh. <laughs> with Ginger, Ian, and Alex. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. All right. Until next time, guys. Bye.